I think it was February 1996. My sight had been going down for a few months, so I went along to see the specialist. He had me in his office for a full two or three minutes, and in that time, carried out a few tests, turned around and told me, you're now going blind, and you'll be blind by the end of the year. Uh, so I'd recommend that you get yourself a guide dog, learn some Braille, and if you need to know anything else, please phone up my secretary and make an appointment to see me. I left his consulting office, cried a little bit for a while, felt sorry for myself for a little while for a few hours, and then got back to work and off I went. As I've said before, you've got two options, you know, one is you sit at home and cry and mope about it and feel sorry for yourself and the other is you get and do something and at the moment I'm not the sort of person that mopes around and cries too much. I'm just making, uh, making the most of what I've got and getting out there and enjoying myself. The challenge as I know it is basically to paddle from the Isle of Scilly back to the mainland. It could be up to 30 miles quite easily. Obviously we've got Dean who's blind. So the key is here not to win a race, it's to actually work as a team and get back together and sort of enjoy the ride. If I was Dean I probably wouldn't be doing this. I guess being partially blind and doing a sport that requires balance, it's really amazing that he's doing it. When I'm out paddling, I'll see the sky and I'll see the water, but the join isn't going to be very obvious. Everything just kind of merges into one. Hopefully I will see Carl, because he's my guide. But beyond that, I'm not going to see a great deal. And to be honest, I won't be looking for much more than Carl. There's no point in wasting my time looking for something that I won't see. This is a massive challenge with him, with eight to 10 hours of paddling in front of him. Once you're out there a couple of hours, then you are committed. If the weather changes, you've literally got nowhere to run to. Three, four hours in, if things start to get a bit harder, you've still got three or four hours of paddling in front of you. We picked a good window of weather, but at the same time there's a lot of currents out there. We've got two big shipping lanes that are four miles wide each. To support Dean, we'll keep a good eye out to let him know the ships and boat wakes are coming. Once I knew that this trip was going to go ahead, I thought, well, you know, I've got to experience what Dean goes through. Even on my local canal, trying to paddle along there with your eyes shut, you find yourself bumping into the lily pads which seems ridiculous, but it's really off-putting when something suddenly touches you that you're not expecting. So for him to actually achieve, you know, crossing this, it's just phenomenal. In the early days, when I wanted to do something, nine times out of 10, I would be told I couldn't do it because of my eyesight. So therefore, I was wanting to prove everyone wrong, but I think I've kind of done that now. Once my sight's gone completely, I don't know if I'll be, I don't know, brave enough or stupid enough to continue doing the extreme sports and stuff that I do. So at the moment, I, there's a bit of a race going on that I want to try and get as much done as I can before my sight's gone. We didn't do record-breaking time. That wasn't obviously the idea. The idea was to work as a team, get across, which we did. When we landed, I think my final thought was, I hope this man never asked me to paddle again, <laughs> to be honest. If that's his idea of a little paddle, then crumbs. I don't know what a big one would be. But obviously, you know, if he comes up with another challenge, I think me and the lads will be right there standing with him and going, right, let's, let's go for it. Paddleboarding is about people enjoying themselves and not just about racing and doing it for yourself. So it's great to support him. Yeah.